This talk's a little different. I guess I'm going to start that way. <laughs> um, so I've been a data scientist for four years. But like most people with that title, I really believe I've been doing that much longer. Except back then, it was called biomedical informatics research. When I first got into data science, I did it for a pretty noble cause, I think. I was interested in fighting against cancer. Now, many of you may know this, but cancer is not one single disease. Um, it's a disease of the genome, that's true, so it's mutations in cancer. But of the 1.7 million cancers that will be diagnosed this year in the United States, you can put them broadly into 21 categories. That's not one disease. But it's actually a lot more unique than just that. Every cancer is formed from a set of mutations that arises in that set of cells that allows it to grow and to spread and to ultimately kill the patient. Now, when we study cancer, we study those mutations. We look for patterns and differences in the cancer cells from the cells in the rest of our bodies. Everyone here was formed from one single cell. And that cell contained DNA that was unique to you. No one else has that DNA, unless you have a twin. Now what happens is that cell and that DNA is a blueprint for how to create you. It's three billion letters long. And it contains all the instructions for how that cell will divide and continue to give rise to many more cells. In fact, all of the cells in your body were formed from that one cell. And all of the cells in your body have the exact same DNA. But sometimes that DNA mutates. And when that happens, it can start misbehaving. It can cause cancer. Now, when we study cancer, we're trying to understand what the differences are between the patients that have a set of mutations that allow it to be treated by one particular drug or another. And the reason why that's important is if we get it wrong, that patient will become sicker and the cancer will become stronger. So we need to get this right the first time. And that's what was so interesting to me, was that I could use data to try and predict an outcome, to try and help patients. So I started doing research, and I began studying those mutations. I was able to get access to data. I wrote code. I built models. I was able to write papers about this. We were able to give talks. We published got more grants to get more funding so that we could get more data, figure out more about that cancer, predict better. But all of a sudden, I realized I had lost something. I no longer thought about the patients. I thought about the data. All of those patients were just a collection of mutations and an outcome. And I had forgotten the why around what it was that I was doing. I was so caught up in the work itself. And it's really not something that's completely unique to data science. In fact, it's really something that happens in almost every science. But if we think about cancer research in general, one of the things that we study very frequently is a cancer cell line. So here's an image of one such cell line. The way they're formed is we take a cell from a tumor and we immortalize it. What that means is you can make infinite copies of it can send it around to other labs. They can all study that same cell, make lots of different pictures of it. Beautiful, beautiful photos. Study it in great detail. For example, this one, HeLa. This is a cancer cell line was created in 1951. This image was created in 2011. The same cells we've been able to study for 60 years now in exquisite detail in this image. But that cell line was created from a tumor in 1951. And that tumor came from this woman, Henrietta Lacks. It's actually named after her, Gila Henrietta Lacks. Now, when we study the cancer cell line, we don't think about this woman who went in January of 1951 to the doctor because she felt a lump, who then found out she was pregnant and gave birth, found out she had cervical cancer and died in October of that same year. We study Gila we completely forget about Henrietta. And that's something that I really want to fight against, because I, well, I want to remember why it is that I'm working on this. I want to remember Henrietta. Now, certainly this doesn't only happen in cancer research. In fact, once I left the research 
space and came into industry, I was able to work on projects in a lot of different areas. There are exciting projects in a lot of different fields, and one of the ones I got to work at was actually at a bank here with Pivotal. We were studying data from call centers. It was a really exciting project. Call centers might not sound so exciting, but the project itself from a data science perspective was extremely exciting. I was given access to a set of phone numbers and the logs off of those phone numbers and information about agents. And the bank needed me to match up the phone numbers to the agents that were using them because they weren't able to track this very well. And I'll get into why. So it was a fun problem. I had all these call logs, what people were calling about, how long they were on the phone, and everything else. I had badge swipe data, single sign-on events. I had what they were doing in terms of desktop logins. And it was a fun problem trying to match up those patterns to each other. And as I was doing it, it was exciting work. I enjoyed it, but I started thinking, why is this even a problem? This is so silly. Why don't we just record this information? And the bank said, well, we have a lot of churn in agents, and this is happening because we can't really track what they're doing, and so we think they might be misbehaving, slacking on the job, so we really need to know. And I thought about it. I thought about the data that I was looking at, those badge swipes, somebody badging in at midnight, taking a break at 4 a.m., leaving at 8 a.m. I thought about the agent. I thought about my experience with those agents when I call up, like the ones at the IRS maybe, and they're just not helping me, and I'm so frustrated. I wish I had someone on the phone that was better. I ask for somebody, ask for a manager, and then I think about the agent who does dozens of these calls every single day and has to deal with people like me and be unsuccessful and feel like they're being watched and then go home and have dinner with their family and try and remember what it is that they're having to go back to the next day but enjoy that particular moment. So I went back to them and I said, hey, why don't we not just solve the problem of matching up the phone number to the people? Why don't we think about how to actually match up the phone calls that they're going to be good at to the agents? We'll be happier when I call up, they'll solve my problem faster. You'll be happier, you don't have to hire new agents. And the agent will have a better day. They'll feel more fulfilled, like they've done a good job today and they can go home and think about happy things, enjoy dinner with their family. And what happened for me there was quite different from what had happened before. It's, I went through a rehumanization process. I started off with a problem, and suddenly I started thinking about the people behind that problem. And it was that that I had so remembered during cancer research that I had craved. And I really think it's important to remember all the time the people behind the data that we're working with. And it's hard, even in something as obvious as cancer research, to remember that patient. But for me, it's important. And every time I work with a customer, of course I want to bring value to them in terms of what it is that you can do with your data, how can you generate more revenue, how can you reduce your costs. But I also want to think about the social value in what it is that we're doing. So when I go to the project, what I really want to bring to it, yes, I want to succeed in the work, but I also want to plant that seed and bring that idea, not just to make data more accessible, but also to make it more human. Thank you.